calculator video. So um, I've got the calculator app up here and I've got um, a couple questions. I did make a new page for you guys to see and I'll show you where that is in just a moment. Um, but we're gonna look at this function first and this function is sine of 2x plus 2e to the 0 0.42x all over 3x plus 11. So grab your calculator, pause as you need, and we're gonna do this together. The first thing I want you to notice is this is a fraction. So anytime we enter fraction, we want to go alpha y equals because um, the parentheses get very confusing, especially in this TI screen. So if we go ahead and just do alpha y equals, so alpha y equals, and we can pick one for numerator and denominator, and we have a nice fraction here. So our function is sine of 2x, and type that in, and it is plus, 2e to the, oops, and if you ever mess up, you get a delete or insert. I love the delete button, and it is 0.42x, 0.42x, that's my numerator. To get the denominator, I just hit the down arrow, and in the denominator, I have 3x plus 11, so 3x plus 11. And so that is my function. So if you've noticed here, I'm going to denote um, f of x as y1. So f of x is y1, and I want to find some things. Right away, I know I'm going to, have to do the derivative. We're in calculus. So I'm going to go ahead, and if you haven't done this yet, um, we're going to go ahead and put the derivative in y3. So here is how you do that. The instructions are math. And I'm going to wait, let me clear this so you can see the clear. So you can see the screen presses here. So it's math. And then we're going to pick 8, because math 8 is n deriv. And we want to do this for all x. So we're going to put x there. So it's d dx, which is the derivative with respect to x. And we're going to do that with y equals. I finally remembered the uh, shortcut. And that's alpha trace. So if you hit alpha trace, boom, there is y1 right there, so much faster than what we were doing before in class and then arrow over, and we want x equals x because we want, we want to graph not just one point, we want to graph the entire derivative. So right now, once you look at the screen, um, I'm going to arrow over. If you look in y1, you'll see that it is highlighted. See the highlighted? That means it's going to graph that. If you look at y3, it's highlighted. You see it's going to graph that. So anytime anything is highlighted, that means it's going to graph them. To turn the highlight off, say I didn't want to graph the derivative, then you put your cursor on the derivative and you just hit the enter key. Okay, so I'll do that again, clear. So you can see, I put my cursor on the derivative, so or on the equal sign, so it's just blinking there, and I hit enter, and if you'll notice, it highlights it and turns it on. So I'll do it one more time. If I hit enter, it turns it off. So if you can see right now, we are graphing y1 because it's highlighted, but we're not graphing y3. So if we hit graph, we can see what that looks like. This is just y1, which is blue on mine. And if I go back to my y equals truly y1, which is the original function, is blue and y3 is the derivative, that would be the black color. So let's go back and find f of five. Now, once you've typed a function, you should never have to type a function again. The reason we type it in y1 is y3 is then we can use, we can calculate things with that. So I'm gonna clear my prehistory again. And I'm going to hit second quit. This takes us to the home screen. Now, I want what is f of 5, which is the function at 5. Remember, your function's in y1. So you're going to hit alpha trace, which is y1 and the 1 key. So it's just like function notation. So normally, see how it has f with parentheses? It has a 5. So you're going to do a parentheses as well. And you're going to do 5. It's just like function notation. Instead of calling it f, it's calling it y1. Same thing. And you're going to hit enter. Boom. There you go. So say you wanted to find the derivative at 2 thirds. Well, the really great thing now is, and I'm going to clear this history, is that you already have typed in the y1 one time. Woohoo! Oh, except we want y3 this time. So that's not exciting. But if you did want y1 again, you can just arrow up and hit enter like this. Say you wanted to find y of zero, and you could arrow over, and you could replace that with zero and hit enter. I know I didn't ask you that, but I just wanted to show you um, that trick. And another trick is if you want to enter anything, 
So you can go up here, anything you highlight, highlight and then hit enter, it'll repeat it on the next line. So that's pretty cool. Um, or even better, if you have an answer and you hit plus, it's gonna take your answer plus something or time something. So there's just a, just a, a few little, little tricks there, but let's clear that out because what we really want now is we want the derivative at two thirds. So we're gonna, again, um, our derivative, remember, is in y3. So we're gonna go to alpha trace, which gives us our y1, y2, and three is y3, parentheses. Now, two thirds, you can write two slash three, you could do alpha y equals, you really don't need to do alpha y equals for the fraction at this point because it's just one simple thing it's pretty easy and you hit enter and you should get boom you should get the fraction so our next thing is our next question is hey at what value for x does for x greater than zero does the line tangent to the graph have slope of two remember slope is the derivative right and our derivative is in y3 and we're saying the derivative is two so if you notice right here this is saying f prime of x will equal 2, which makes that a y value. The easiest way to do this is just to go ahead into your y function and graph it in 2. So you're going to go to y equals, and let's graph 2 into y2. And that basically right now is saying, let me clear this up, that y equals 2. So we've got y equals 2, and we have f prime of x. So we don't want the original function. We want the derivative. So we're going to see where these two intersect. So that means that we do not need to graph y1 anymore. So we're going to go turn that off by hitting enter. But we do want to graph y3. So we're going to hit enter there. So once we do that, we can just hit graph. Let's go. So we're going to see where this guy equals, oh, equals 2. So y3 is a derivative and y2 is the value. We're going to hit graph and see where they intersect. There's the line y equals two. Notice the derivative takes longer. Um, the derivative, the it has to process it. And there we go. Okay, so it looks like it's in two different places, but go back to the instructions. It says for x is greater than zero. So we don't want this value to the left. We want the one value here. So it's kind of far away. It doesn't matter if you wanted to zoom in, you could do window. And for the window is the domain and range. So if I go to graph right now, our domain is negative 15 to 16. And if you look, that's like negative 15 to 16, but we only care about here. So the window, the X min and the X max, that's the domain. Say we want negative one and be sure to hit the negative because TI doesn't know any different. And then we're gonna go max, let's say, I don't know, 15. And then for the y min, it looks like it was greater than zero. So, I mean, you don't have to zoom in. I'm just showing you how to zoom in if you would like to. Not that big of a deal, but you don't really need to for this equation. But I want to go ahead and show it to you closer. There we go. I think I made it big enough. Going to 15. Boom. So you may not have been able to see it on yours. You may have had to zoom out because um, it was past the 10. And I think your normal thing is 10 to 10. So um, that is why you had to, to zoom out there. Mine is on the computer, so it fixed it automatically. So now I'm going to clear the history again so you can watch my keystrokes. And we're gonna find the intersection. To do that, you wanna calculate. And if you look, calculate is above the trace button. So it's second trace, which gives you calculating. And you can find values, the zero, minimum, maximums, and where we intersect. So that is what we wanna find, the intersection value, which is five. And it's going to say, hey, what is the first curve? Now, you don't, you shouldn't be on the point, especially if you have a calculator that's not colored because it's hard to tell uh, which you're on. But you should get a little closer, especially if you have two points of intersection. So that's the first curve. Enter. That's the second curve. Enter. And it's going to ask you if you want to guess, but we don't have time for that. So we're going to hit enter again, and it's going to give us the y value. So the intersection point is 11.59. When... So that is the intersection point, um, and that's how you find it.